Good evening everyone, today is Monday, but I'm already recording the patch notes for the 918th, 918th TFT patch since we are getting it ahead of time so I can release it the moment the patch notes publicly hit, uh, you know, social media. So we can talk about them earlier and this will be my prediction what will happen with the game. So let's cut it. Let's go straight to the meat. Um, there's a big um, change in the item distribution. Instead of mystery boxes that always contain either gold or an item, or half an item, now there will be three different mystery boxes. Grey, which is common, blue, which is uncommon, and gold, which is rare. All of them can contain gold, or champions, or Nico's help, which is fantastic, by the way. Nico's help is a new item that makes a copy of a character. It's one use only. So you can, an example, make another Akali, another Shivana, another Swain to make it easier for you to upgrade it. But remember, it only copies the lowest level of that character. So if you copy, let's say, a silver Shivana, you will get a bronze Shivana. But in general, it helps you a lot with making a stronger composition. Now, the uncommon boxes can also contain half items, basically, uh, while the gold boxes can contain full items and spatulas all of the boxes can also contain champions which is something new which is basically gold in form of champions uh, or gold itself which inflates the amount of gold that you will get early in the game this has actually huge connotations when it comes to how the game will evolve into the further uh, parts of your game to mid game especially and we'll talk about it in a bit because how how does it change? I mean, this in general, this entire change is um, the reason why we have this change is to unify the amount of items or bonuses in general from the drops among players. So it's more fair towards all players. And it makes sense. It actually works uh, in my, well, let's say, limited amo uh, amount of experience gathered from the games on PBE. I was never unhappy with the result of the first three rounds when I was playing it, I either had full gold or a lot of champions or had a lot of items, which is fantastic because I can always drive my game game plan towards one end, which is not, you know, three gold and one half item, which is basically nothing like we do like we do have like like we do have it right now. So I think it's a great change. We'll see how it affects the entire game because as I said earlier, there's a huge inflation of gold and that will have a, 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 a change with something else that we'll mention later in this patch note. So we're going to get back to this, um, get back to this topic in a few. Now, next thing, new trait, nine assassins, nine sorcerers. It's more of a flashy thing to do. It's only possible with spatulas. Basically, if you can do it, you're probably as a streamer or a YouTuber and want just some content. In general, won't happen in most of your games. But it's a cool effect that can happen and someone will probably post like an ASOL with, I don't know, triple Rabadans and nine sorcerers dealing like 2k damage to each champion with his ult. But yeah, but it's it's flashy. It's uh, I think it's especially doable with assassins, um, but who knows? We'll see. Now, a very big change though to the entire metagame is the change to the wild trait which is huge basically wild now gives just attack speed but after the change will also give you an effect of rapid fire cannon at least of the part when you can't hit sorry when you can't miss your basic attacks which nullifies yordles and nullifies phantom dances which are basically in the meta because of how many assassins we do have so in general for wild grants you like a full item which is nuts because it's an offensive item, right? It gives you like three quarters of a Rage Blade on each of your characters and your creatures can't miss, which is a big, big thing. So in general, I feel like wild, let's say four wild, three assassins and a splash can be a thing in the new metagame. And I think it will be something that a lot of people will um, try at least in the beginning Especially since, you know, Rengar and Nar are fantastic creatures. So, why not play them, right? And then you can just pitch in two other wilds. And suddenly, 
well, you gain so much mana and you can't miss your attacks. It depends, on, of course, on the lobby and the context, but I feel like wild right now will become super powerful. I mean, four wilds. Maybe not like top tier, top tier, but it will be playable as an endgame um, composition and it will be feared, you know? Now, this next change will be something that is impacting a lot of stuff and this is going to be probably looking way more complicated um will be sorry you will you will li listen uh, uh, about this as it's more way more complicated than looks i think that was correct sentence anyway the level up of experience needed for each of the levels is increased when it comes to fifth level it's now 12 xp instead of 10 which makes a difference because you are usually leveling up from six experience to 10 which is only four gold then the same applied after crooks when you were leveling to 6 and you were were going from like 6, 10, 14, 18. But now you will need 2 more, which is 1 batch of gold needed, which is 4. Then at 7, it doesn't really make a, make, a, make a difference because you are typically leveling up after raptors from 28 to 30. So this is like from 28 to 32, no difference. For level 8, it will make a difference, it's just 4 more gold. And for level 9, it's 6 more gold, which is delays the inevitable, which probably will not happen in most single games. But this is not as important. So the reason why the experience is being raised, I mean, the, the experience needed to, to, to level up is raised, is because we have inflated economy, economy with... Um, with the new loot boxes, because we get more gold, more champions, we can, which we can sell, which creates more gold, right? So you get easier interest, and you, in general, have way more gold in the early game. But if you have way more gold, way more gold early game, we know how TFT works. It encourages aggression, and if it encourages aggression, more people will be going for your key components to make a um, composition work, right? So stuff like shivana stuff like evelyn stuff like three sarcastics three sarcasadin all of those units is something that people would like to get as soon as possible and with more amount of gold you can more you can roll more and get more of them now a very interesting context is that here you can see tier three units the loot pool for each tier three unit got reduced from 21 to 18 so it will be way harder for multiple people to share the same character the same the, the way we do we have it right now so less shivanas less evelyns less rengas it will be more complicated to get them online basically to silver like cannons as well which is a nerfed elementalist and so on so more people will be probably encouraged to roll on level four and five way more than they were used to and also because you have more gold right kind of makes sense Will it be like this way that I explained right now in the actual game? I don't know yet. We're going to have to see how the players will play. But that's my prediction. And we're probably going to degenerate into hyper-rolling for three stars on, on the tier 1 and tier 2 while going for silver creatures on tier 3. It's going to be interesting. Now, you need tier drop rates. Good a bit changed in a very meaningful way that means on level three you have five percent more chance to actually get one cost so less people will be inclined to level up on two one because you would like most cases get more one cost units in general it's an interesting change there's also five that five percent was not taken out of the thin air it was actually moved from the tier two to tier one which is a big nerf to actually finding your like third Z third Lissandra, third Jace, and so on. Now, on other levels, it's not as big of a change. Maybe on level 5, tier 4 is actually 2% more a common, from 3% to 5%. That's actually quite big anyway. But the biggest, 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 biggest change of all is the, when it comes to the math, least meaningful. But hear me out. Tier 5 units are not possible to get at level 6. There's 0% that you will get a Kyle Swain Yasuo on level 6, which makes impossible to get full nobles and full shapeshifters online on level 6. It can only happen on level 7. 
which is a good good change prevents hyper um lucky you know rolls from players uh, and that just makes me feel good about the game because you will not meet a guy that has a swain and a yasuo <laughs> in his composition at level six which do, which does happen nowadays you know so it's a good change on level nine you get a, a slightly higher chance of getting five codes of two percent which is actually a big change uh but at the same time reduced ch is a reduced change uh a reduced chance to get tier three uh units by two percent so it's a 33 percent chance at level nine it doesn't happen that much that often so it doesn't really matter that much now tier three units in the bag we already discussed there are less free free tier uh free cost units in the bag which is good for the game in my opinion good for the diversity less people going for the same composition now clarity and stacking from items is being clarified a little bit all the special items cannot be stacked on one character which makes sense so they follow the rule of a trait from a champion let's say a demon um brand when it's given a darken the darken pops out of it right so let's say we make darius a demon we give him darken and then we give him a second darken then the second darken just pops out right back and you can just put it on someone else it makes sense it's a good change also prevents you from being in a really tough spot when you don't want to give a recurve bow to someone who has the blade of the ruined king because you know you might actually do another blade blade master from that bow if you get another spatula and aim for the nine blade masters you know so it's a good good change same applies to phantom dancer same applies to Mor morello and red buff which all makes sense although i was certain that they will make morello and red buff not being able to be put on one character but since they're being applied in a different way but they have the exactly same effect and they don't stack the effect they are possible to have on the same character which kind of makes sense but doesn't make sense now when it comes to adjustments of the traits golem got buffed by a lot 20 armor into 40 armor that makes the golem way more tankier than before which is kind of weird because i felt like elementalists were in a good spot but we'll see we'll see it's kind of hard to get it's gonna be harder to get multiple elementalists on the board right now since you got you know reduction of uh anivias on level six and a reduction of cannons in general in the pool less people should be playing elementalists now when it comes to the knights they got buffed by a lot in my opinion knights were already playable uh as a two off and a four off but now four off is even better than before by five which is great that's a 13 percent buff which is insane but the knight six i will have to ask myself will it be good enough to play it on its own and i feel like this might be actually very close i will have to test it out and do the math but i feel like when you have high hp creatures actually having knight's reduction on six might be a, a bit absurd but we'll see of course if someone is just playing big nukes then it doesn't matter but in general a lot of a lot of uh damage coming in in tft is actually dealt in chips not in chunks so six knights might be actually very playable we'll see we'll see you still need to find damage somehow in those knights so that's a, another question if that composition will work but as damage reduction i feel like those six knights might be actually very good assassins jumps delay got increased by 70 milliseconds a huge buff to assassins easier to decorner people it's already actually kind of easy to corner people and more of the tasks uh, for the assassins player were, were to put your on the foot units further away from an example rangers but now with this delay delayed um jump i feel like it's gonna be even easier to decorner a composition of rangers an example and jump on those carries even from the last row so this is actually i think a, a very big change now when it comes to champions um uh, champion changes there are some few significant changes camille is like the least impactful now um 5 ad plus it's okay camille was actually pretty bad at least spiderlings deal 60 ad instead of 50 ad which was a huge deal in the early game since um spiderlings became useless as soon as someone has a night synergy online even the two of so with this they actually will deal will deal some damage to the knights graves armor got changed from 20 to 30 i think that's a great change because the main purpose of graves is actually frontlining 
And with 20 armor, that was not a possibility. With 30 armor, I feel like he might actually be a good enough frontliner again to be played. And in general, might be a way better champion. Although this chain doesn't seem like a big thing, but it, it is. Kassadin and Kazix got nerfed, which is a welcome side because Kazix and Kassadins are in the meta. Uh, when it comes to voids, they are just nuts, especially Kassadin um, Assassin. So this scales down his damage a little bit. Um, and also a big change to Kazix, especially early and late, uh, sorry, early in mid game. He will have to sacrifice basically around three auto attacks more to have his ult online, which is a big nerf to his damage early in mid game. But at the same time, I feel like this is a, a buff to a three star Kazix late game since he, he doesn't want to ult. He wants to auto attack. Because he will deal true damage and the, the crits from assassins will actually deal more damage. He will have more DPS by just auto-attacking instead of using his ultimate, which takes so much time. It's like It feels like three auto-attacks in most of the cases, especially in, if he has some attack speed items. And that can be a thing. Now, Pike got a big nerf. Reduced the starting mana by 25. 25 is a lot. That's one full tier and one auto-attack. So that means... That even if you stack mana items as you do right now on Pike, he will still have mana missing, so he will not ult after one auto attack anymore. Big nerf to Pike. Another one, by the way. But I feel like it's probably needed. He's in a bad spot when when he's played on his own, but he's actually insane when still played in the full package of assassins. So. It's kind of he's kind of in a weird spot, and I'm not really surprised that he got nerfed. Twisted Fade, an insane buff, and I'm not talking about the HP here, but I'm talking about the blue mana card. Right now, a playable Twisted Fade, which is the silver one, will give 50 mana instead of 35. That's insane. When you play hungry mana creatures like Asol, Lulu, um, Chogat, I don't know or even shapeshifters, you can accelerate all those ultimates by basically 50% with one blue mana card. That's bonkers. I feel like Twisted Fade might become a very powerful creature. Evelyn got a little bit nerfed when it comes to the damage. Now she requires a half bar of your opponents to get the execute, and it also got reduced by one-fifth on the silver creature level. So she still does a lot of damage, but it will happen less frequent in the openings. So, I think it's a good nerf. Evelyn was kind of countered by the meta choices of players. Especially the amount of dragons that we have. But she's still very powerful. Katarina got buffed. To 85 mana. Will that make her playable? Probably not. But maybe? Who knows? I mean, she's a good character if she goes off, right? And this will make her... Like, if she has... <laughs> Two Seraphs. She goes off after one auto attack. <laughs> but yeah, two Seraphs. Or Darkin and a Seraph. Anyway, you get my point. Uh, Akali got buffed. I feel like she got over nerfed because of the, you know, obvious reasons when everyone was going for ninjas and the ninja trait was just too powerful. And because of the change of ninja trait, now she needs a buff because she was just too weak. He, like, I never felt at the need of playing actually Akali instead of Zed. You know, Zed was powerful enough and so on um so in this case i feel like akali uh will be again in a good place when it comes to her usage so akali assassin might be coming back remember that he, her uh skill does crit so this this 75 attack uh, sorry um ap buff on her skill is very scalable and that is insane now anivia got a buff as well um i mean a buff buff and a nerf the nerf, because she, the, the spell duration got reduced from 8 seconds to 6, and it's a big change, but at the same time, the damage doesn't get nerfed. So she deals the same amount of damage over less amount of time, and it's a huge amount of time, because it's a one quarter of the duration change, which is essentially dealing way more damage. Way more damage. And even deals insane amount of damage. It's 800 damage over 6 seconds. It, it's insane. So I feel like stacking... Attack speed or mana generation on Nivia will be even better now. Pantheon got nerfed from 1k HP to 150, and that's a that's a huge nerf. 
Imagine he's always equipped with a giant's belt when you buy him, and that gets taken away. I mean, not entirely because it's 200 and not 150, but you get my point, right? It's a huge nerf. It's a huge nerf. The AD doesn't matter. It's all about his skill anyway. But this nerf will actually mean that he it will be not as powerful as a bronze creature. I'm not sure if he will be like, you know, right now, if you have Pantheon, you just throw him in it. From him, throw him in. He's just so good. With this nerf, hmm, I'm not so sure. You might actually go for some silver creatures instead. So this will be an interesting choice. Now, when it comes to items, BF Sword got nerfed from 20 to 15 AD, probably because it, it's just so overplayed with GAs, with Hexed Gunblades, with Bloodthirsters. In general, it's just like BF is the main component, which is the most priced one at the first carousel. Like, I want to start with a BF every single time, if I have the chance, right now in this current metagame. So, interesting choice. We'll see how it goes in the future when um, BF Sword might not be the first pick uh, for items. Frozen Heart got a big buff, and I feel like this might actually make her uh, make it a very, very desirable item, especially on Assassins and Shapeshifters. Making the debuff work for 4 seconds reduces the mana generation for your opponents by a huge margin. It's essentially almost a mana lock right now, like for 4 seconds. It's insane. It's really insane. I feel like Frozen Heart will be very playable right now. Locket of the Iron Iron um, Locket of the Iron Solari got buffed by 50 HP for one more second. Not a big buff, but we can have Locket as a playable item because it's just <laughs> you know it's just too good. So this is this is like a probably like you can play it, but it's nothing special. Swordbreaker, as much as much as I like the item, I feel like the 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 effect itself is very detrimental to the game itself and it doesn't fit. And the change for it, I feel like it's unnecessary. Because right now it has 25% to trigger it for 4 seconds. But now it will have, after the patch, 33% for 3 seconds. Now essentially, of course, this makes a change for early game and late game, sorry, early game and mid game. When the character bearing a disarm doesn't have a lot of attack speed. But if you stack attack speed with the disarm, essentially the reduction of the duration doesn't really matter because you will perma disarm a character more often because you will have just so much more chances of actually triggering it and every time it triggers it overrides uh the duration of the effect so essentially this is not a nerf it's a strict buff in my opinion because early game doesn't matter that much anyway zephyr got a buff by one second which might be very important for late game item picks. And I feel like Zephyr got buffed because of that by a lot. Now when it comes to bug fixes, nothing really that important in here, apart from the fact that Luden's Echo is working correctly now, which is great, uh, and deals the damage to the spell, uh, spells, um, how do you call it? Target, basically. Uh, other than that, that's about it. And yeah. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like it, leave a comment. Leave the whatever up or down. If you didn't like it, down. If you liked it, then thumb up. And if you really liked it and you would like to see more, more videos, remember that I'm here for you guys and I do this because I have, I have support. The more support I have, the more I'm motivated to actually make those videos. So whenever you leave a sub, my heart goes on.